Mike Owens with Inside Fighting here, and it's always a pleasure to be joined by Dangerous Davey Grant, who returns to action next week at UFC Tampa. Davey, always a pleasure, my man. How are things with you today? Yeah, it's nice to see you again, mate. I hope things are good. I'm very well. All the better for speaking with you. How are your emotions ahead of your return? I can't wait. I'm excited. Honest, I am. I'm excited. Uh, I love it. It was um, it was hard to, to not be able to fight last time. Um, and and I'm, I'm just pleased to get a pretty quick turnaround considering what's happened. Mm. Because this has been one of the longer layoffs in your career. I know that you had two years out, I think, from you in your, in your earlier on in your career. I know there was a bit of a layoff after the Ultimate Fighter. How have you managed that? Because I do know that you were matched up against Cody Gibson in March. Yeah. How have you managed the, the 18 or, or so months out of the cage? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it is what it is. This, this is always going to happen with fighters, you know. It's a, it, it's a hard sport. We get injured and things like that. Uh, and I just, I just concentrate on getting better. You know, that's, that's all I ever tell myself. I say, look, at the next time that I come to fight, I'm going to be better. You know, so as long as I'm putting the work in at home and um, when, I, when I, I've, I haven't got a fight coming up, then I'm guaranteed to be better by the time the fight does come around. So I try not to let it bother me. You know, you just got to take the rough of the smooth. At this stage of your career, when you when you don't have a fight booked, but you're obviously healthy, is it a case of building new skills or is it a case of refining what you already have? Uh, it's a bit of both. It's a bit of both, in all honesty. You know, like I'm not really, uh, I'm not going to change too much about the way I fight, but I mm. love to learn because I'm a coach at the same time. Mm. You know, so so as a coach, you've got to know a hell of a lot about, or a hell of, a little about a hell of a lot. And as a fighter, you want to know a hell of a lot about a little. Do you know mm. what I mean? So it's like, it, it, so it just it works both ways. I'm just a student of the game. I always will be. Honestly, I absolutely love it. It must be nice to get back out in front of fans. And I say that knowing that your last fight was in front of fans, but then I checked the record. You had five consecutive fights in the Apex, followed by the, the small arena in Vegas when yeah. Jan and Devalishvili headlined. So it must be nice to get in front, out in front of fans and fight in front of an American public. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It's, all, it's always great to walk out in, in front of a packed arena, you know. It's, uh, mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's a right buzz, you know. I can't wait. It's so nice as well from from my perspective, mate, to see when your fights get announced because there's always so much buzz and excitement and not even just from the UK audience, just in general. It feels like maybe after the Jonathan Martinez fight, I feel like maybe that was the change. You really seem to become a, a fan favourite and somebody who, when Davey Grant's on a card, people people start to pay attention. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, it's nice to to sort of be noticed because of like because I feel like I've got an exciting file, you know, an exciting fight style, and I I do. I come to bring it every single fight. Do you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, sort of people pick up on that, and and they, yeah, they like 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 to go and watch me perform, and that's what it's all about. It's the entertainment industry at the end of the day, isn't it? You know, mm. so it's all, always nice. What do you make on your next opponent, Roman Tavares? What do you think he does well, and maybe some areas that you're looking to exploit? Yeah, I mean. He's he, he's decent. He's like he's like a slick little boxer. Do you know what I mean? He's a uh, southpaw. Seems tough, and it's going to be a good stand up fight. You know, like I've, I've been watching him, and I can see loads of different things where I feel like I match up well against him. But I feel like I match up well against just about everyone in the division. You know, doing what I do, I think I'm a little bit different. Um, so yeah, it'll definitely make for a good, exciting fight. What's interesting about this one, mate, is just the gap in experience as well. I mean. It's, I think he's he's one and zero in the UFC. Yeah. You had your first fight in the UFC over ten years ago. So how much do you think your experience in the cage will be key in this one? Oh yeah, definitely. It makes it makes a difference no matter what. You can only get experience with experience. Do you know what mm. I mean? And uh, and I, I've been at this yeah, like you say, a long time now. I think it was I think it was eleven years ago. I had my first fight in the UFC. Now mm. just this weekend, just this weekend yeah. gone. I think it's uh, yeah, it's it's been a it's been a long time. But honestly, I still feel like I'm getting better. You know, it's like I, I've had a great run. I absolutely love fighting in the UFC, and uh, yeah, just let's keep let's keep it going. It's that old thing, mate, isn't it? Of like age versus miles on the clock. Like, yeah. you might be older in your career in terms of the age side, but in terms of actual miles on the clock, you haven't a been in too many wars, yeah. so you've still got an element of, of freshness for a considering you're going to turn thirty nine in about two weeks' time. Yeah, yeah. It's uh yeah it is and honest mate I still feel young and like I'm not daft in the gym anymore I used like when when you first start we were all like that back in the day we were having like fucking wars in the gym three or four mm. times a week do you know what I mean and uh, then you, you learn you, you learn to fight a bit smarter and it, it, you start you don't, you just don't get into those sort of so those uh, dust ups with your mates mm. just for the crack anymore do you mm. know what I mean. So I'm a lot more sensible with the way I with the way I come about things, and and honest, I still feel fresh, mate. I still know that I'm like 
one of the best in the division and it, I'll just keep on fighting until I feel like that's not true. How different is the Davy Grant who fought Chris Holdsworth in 2013 to the Davy Grant who's going to fight Ramon Tavares in 2024? Well, it's a country mile difference. Like I'm telling you, I was absolutely green when I got in the UFC. I didn't know anything. Like I've got guys in my gym, amateurs who've had one or two fights who would, would have beat me bad when I first got in the UFC. I just had to learn how to fight while I was in the UFC. Mm -hmm. And that was against some of the best guys in the world. Uh, I just, I just didn't, just didn't know anything, you know. Like mm -hmm. looking back, uh, it was, it, it was very quick, and I wouldn't change it for the world now, mm -hmm. you know. But um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's a total different level of fighting now, mate. Talking about things you would change, mate. Sorry to open a, an old wound, but I'm sure you would yeah. have changed one of those judges' scorecards in the Daniel Marcos fight. I think a lot oh. of people scored that fight for you. So did, did that fight and the way that ended, did that change your approach going to this one in any way? Oh. I mean, no, not really. Look, it's it, it is what it is, you know. Like I, I, I definitely think that I won that fight, and like you say, I think nearly everybody thought I won that fight. And like, look, when you're about this game, this is this is what happens, you know. Sometimes you're at these, uh, you you get these t decisions given against you. Sometimes you're on the end of a fantastic good fifty grand bonus, you know. Like sometimes it works the other way around. You just it, it, everything swings in roundabouts. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I'm not worried about that. I just focus on what I'm going to do with this appointment and then just keep on moving forward. Is it almost a case of not letting the highest get too high and the lowest get too low type of thing? Yeah, you've just got to... It's just like... Just, yeah, that's exactly what it is, mate. Mm. You know what I mean? Just keep driving forward, keep doing what I know I can do. And and then you can't be worried about like what the judges are going to do because I've got absolutely no control over that, you know? Yeah. It's like, so I'm just going to go and do my thing. So when you look at this one, is this a case of just getting back on the horse and getting back in the win column, or is there anything else that you're looking to show past that next Saturday night? No, honestly, yeah, just just go out there, just go perform, enjoy it, and uh, and, and get the win. That's, mm. that's that's all I'm bothered about, you know. Like whatever happens, whether it's a quick knockout, exciting fight, I don't give a fuck. I'm not bothered, mate. Honestly, I just want to get in there and go and perform. Mm, I love it, mate. Um, yeah. Talking about performing, it feels like some of you. British fighters have been more lucky with getting on the on the the UK card, and some of you have been less lucky. I, I point yeah. to you and also Lerone Murphy about being one of the more unlucky, two more yeah. unlucky guys to get on those cards. Is a return to London at March twenty second possible, depending on how the fight goes next Saturday? Running for it, I'll be screaming for it, mate. Guaranteed. So yeah, oh, oh, that 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 that's if everything goes everything goes to plan for me. That that's what I'll be wanting, mate. One hundred percent. Does it does it make any difference in the moment, mate? And what I mean by that is, is obviously there's a there's going to come a point. I've been around enough fighters on fight night to know there's a point where you switch from nice guy Davy into dangerous Davy Grant. If that kind of makes sense, can, yeah. can so when you're walking to the arena and when you're in the cage, can you actually does it does the experience fighting at home feel any different to just fighting anywhere else? Um, I mean, it's it's all honest. It doesn't matter where it is for me. Literally honest, like it, whether I'm in the apex. Whether I whether I'm in fucking London in front of a home crowd, it, honestly, it makes no difference. Once that cage door gets locked, it's tunnel vision anyway. Mm. So it doesn't matter where I am. I like honest. It literally makes no difference at all. Um, but it's it's like just the walkout and the wind's better, you know. So the walkout's yeah. got the crowd there. You know what I mean? Cage door closes. Everything's the same. That's it. I'm focused hundred percent on what I've got to do. And then afterwards. You go win and there's a big crowd a tear and then then that makes it better. But the fight, it's all the same thing. And that's what I'm there for, mate. The fight. Don't get us wrong. Got the, it, the experience is great when you're walking out in front of a crowd cheering and stuff like that. But uh, I, I'm just there to go and win fights. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. Um, what's the training room been like in Syndicate MMA? We were talking off camera. You've been there for most of your camp. What's the what's the room yeah. been like in the training there? Oh, uh, it's honestly it's unbelievable. Like I, I've got like so there's there's like including me there's four UFC bantamweights on on the mat every single day there's like me and then Vince Morales, Moeen Gafrob and Marab, mm. he's the, uh, Marab's the champ you know what yeah. I mean mm. so it's like we, uh, and then on top of that we've got like some honest all the rest of the guys as well but for, especially for my weight there's some high level guys in every single area mm. you know like for wrestlers strikers everything honest I'm uh, and, and all under the watchful eye of John Wood you know he's like one of the best coaches I've ever worked with and I absolutely love being over syndicate they've always looked after me and I mean I've got good gyms over home I train at like my SBG another mm. SBG with Alex Enland I train at TFT over home so we've got, I've got a great little stable of, of gyms that I train at in the northeast 
and then going shopping up in Vegas to do my camps. It's like I feel like I've got the the perfect recipe nowadays, mm. and 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 everything just works. Yeah, I saw you put a photo on with Nazim Sadzakov as well, the UFC lightweight, yeah. and I saw that Arnold passed through as well during his time at Vegas. I was yeah. catching up with him last week. What is I have to ask you about the champion Marab Tavalishvili because obviously yeah. it's a it's a great situation for you to be able to train with the guy who who has the, the world title in your division. Yeah. Just out of interest, what what does a five minute round with him with the machine look like? No, honestly, we get we get great spars in noise. He's one of me one of my best training partners, and uh, and he is a machine. He's like he, his cardio is like second to none. So it's it's an exciting round, guaranteed. But like like I say, with, there's a good feel in the gym. Everyone looks after each other. No one's trying to kill each other. No one's trying to take each other heads heads off. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's controlled, fast paced rounds. And like yeah, and the Arnold Allen's been out there. Nazim's like both high level guys, and and I've been getting rounds in with all of them. I feel like I've had a great camp. Does Marab does Marab tire? Not very often. No. <laughs> <laughs> no he, honestly, he's like you, you see you see what you get out of him in five round fights. Mm. He is non stop. Honestly, God, he's got he's got a great little gas tank on him. Any extra motivation for you having the the champion of your weight division in the gym? Yeah, definitely. It's just nice to know you know you're training with with, with the best guy in the world at our division. You mm. know, so it's all good for the confidence and just great for the training. Mm. We have one British champion at the moment, and that's the interim champion, Tom Aspinall. The question I obviously have to have, ask you as two British fight fans ourselves, do you yeah. think he gets this John Jones fight that everybody is talking about? And that he... Open, so he deserves it, doesn't he? he does. God, I, I, just, I, I love Tom. Tom's a great guy, isn't he? You know? Yeah. And, uh, and I, and I definitely think he got wasn't getting. I'll be I'll be really really disappointed if he doesn't go and get this fight. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, I think I think he deserves it. I think it's it's definitely the fight to make, and yeah, yeah, he should go and get it and get the win. Has John's behaviour around that surprised you at all? Um, I I understand it. I do mm. understand it. You know, you know, but like, there's two ways you can look at it. It, when when Jones was coming up and he was fighting DC, it wasn't that much difference in like the well, he's a, a, like the same age and things mm. like that. And uh, so there's a few sort of like holes in his arguments. I feel, mm. um, but but I do understand he is like what, what like the greatest, or if not like the best ever. But it's like. Do you, if you are, if say, say if you are the greatest fighter ever to live, do you just hang about and keep fighting all these up and comers until you get beat, or exactly. do you just ride off into the sunset? You yeah. know, like I can, I, I can see his ways as much as I, as much as I don't agree with it, but maybe I'm, I'm a lot more biased to Tom because I like him. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But I, but I, but I can see his his reason and, and the way he's sort of looking at it. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, last question from me, mate, and this might be a question more a question for Mrs. Grant rather than Mr. Grant, but. <laughs> You're obviously 39 in two weeks tomorrow, so happy birthday yeah. in advance. It's Christmas a week, a week later, but I imagine yeah. the only present that you're looking for is a win on the 14th yeah. of December. 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Does does Christmas, does your birthday all pale into, into significance when you've got this fight booked? I, I haven't even thought about it. I mean, don't get us wrong. We've still, like, I get excited for Christmas. Mm. You know, we've got three kids, and, mm. and, and it makes it fantastic, do you know what I mean? So I do look forward to Christmas. I'm a bit good that I've been away. I've missed a lot of the build up, you know, like the kids' nativity plays and little mm. like uh, dancing shows and things like that. It's hard, and the, the sacrifices that has to be made, mm. you know. But um, we've got we're bringing the kids over. The kids are going to come over and watch the fight. They're going to come to Florida, and then we're going to go to Disneyland afterwards. Oh, so, perfect. Yeah. So after after uh, then we move back home, and we'll have the nice traditional Christmas as well. So everything's still to look forward to. Amazing, mate. And the only thing I'll say is it, it could be worse. You could be on the January 11th or January 15th <laughs> card and miss the whole of Christmas and New Year having a, a small plate, a small Christmas dinner. So at le every year, uh, every year, uh, you know, at least you've got that. At least you've got that. Yeah, that's it. That's it. 100%. Yeah, things could be worse, couldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks as always for your time, Davey. Always great catching up, mate. Have a great and safe rest of camp and best of luck for the fight. Thanks, mate. Much appreciated. Great time, yeah.